face it, you don't find too many socialists in elective office in this country. And one is elected mayor of a sizable city. Well, that's news. It's also Phil Donahue's topic this morning. Good morning, Jane. A couple of facts. Burlington is the largest city in Vermont. The state has about a half a million people. Burlington has about 38,000. Situated as it is on Lake Champlain with the Adirondack Mountains view, viewable, it's a lovely, lovely spot in this country. We'd like you to meet its new mayor. This is Mayor Bernard Sanders. Mayor Sanders got a lot of attention recently, not only with his 10-vote victory out of about 9,500 votes cast, but mostly because he is a socialist. And everybody reading that article said, my goodness, how did this happen in good old conservative Vermont? How do you respond? Well, in Vermont, being conservative is different, perhaps, than being conservative elsewhere in the country. Also, what I think most people don't know is Vermont happens to be one of the very poorest states in the country. And although we're a little bit better off in Burlington, we still have enormous economic problems. I won the election, I think, because we effectively put together a coalition of low-income people, elderly people, who in Vermont are very often up against the wall economically in very bad shape. Some of our city trade unions. Uh, the cops supported you, didn't they? The police department supported us, yes. The uh, Patrolmen's <laughs> Association did, right. So you, we, you had police officers voting for you who probably voted for Ronald Reagan. Well, I'm not so sure that I don't know if I can say but that's that. Certainly but the police officers in our particular city are earning their trade unionists, and they're earning very low wages, and along with many other workers in our city, want some fundamental change. Also, we have in our city particular problems, I believe, with the police department that they've been concerned about, very low morale. So it didn't particularly surprise me. How are Vermont conservatives different than national conservatives? It's not big money conservatism. It's not right-wingism and warmongerism. In fact, Vermont has always had a very strong feeling about civil liberties. What conservatives, conservatism means yeah. in Vermont basically is leave me alone, get the government off my back, and that's fine. It's a respect for other people's rights. We disagree, we'll talk it out. And that's a very different conservatism that says let's go to war, uh, supernationalism and so yeah. forth. If I were the president of the largest bank in Burlington, I'd be real nervous about you. Well, they may be. They may be. Uh, but I think, and they are, but I think what we've often talked about also is that my powers as mayor are in many ways limited. And I have my visions as to what life should be in Vermont, in Burlington, and in the United States. But within Burlington, I acknowledge everybody knows what my powers are, and they're very limited. Right. We're not going to go around nationalizing banks or nationalizing industry. In fact, we want industry in Vermont that pay decent wages, and we're going to go out and bring that in like every other mayor in the United States is. We are going to speak out, though, on national and international issues which affect the city of Burlington. For example, obviously, we're very concerned about Mr. Reagan's policies, which are impacting devastatingly on low-income and working people. We're concerned about the policies in our own state government, uh, which are affecting low-income people negatively. Yeah. But we know what our powers are within the city of Burlington. When you sit around with your own friends, uh talking about the world here, how we got here, where we're going. Right. What's, your, what's the biggest grievance? Give us your overview. All right, here. what we're talking about is that we believe in democracy. I mean, the problem with the word socialism is that very often it's been equated with what happens in the Soviet Union, which is authoritarianism and totalitarianism. I believe very strongly in the right of dissent, and, and I think people with my ideas fight for those things very strongly. What we talk about is the fact that in our society, theoretically a democratic society, you have a handful of people who control our economy. You have uh, maybe 2% of the population that owns one-third of the entire wealth of America, 80% of the stocks, 90% of the bonds. And these people have incredible power. They sit on huge corporations like the Chase Manhattan Bank, the multinational corporations, and they determine the destiny of our entire country. As you know, perhaps 50% of our population has so given up on the democratic uh, process, they don't even vote. And those are primarily poor people. Your state is thought of as not only beautiful, but the place you go to get away from all that big city smut and... Uh, uh, soot and all the crud and the, the and you've got those wonderful ski areas yeah. hooray let's go more tourism well, for vermont is how do you feel about that well there's yes and no uh I, I think we don't object to people coming into vermont to spend money that's fine but we do know within our own state we happen to be sadly one of the very poor states in america and many of the people in vermont themselves cannot afford to go to the uh, downhill skiing we do more cross-country skiing it's cheaper uh what we are talking about is the kind of development that will provide decent jobs for our people. Very often, and this is a concern within our own state, is that industries such as the skiing industry and other tourist attracting industries in Vermont, all over the country, and all over the world, they provide very low paying menial jobs. I'm not particularly proud that our state becomes a state where we have chambermaids and people waiting on other people. We would rather see our people doing meaningful, productive type jobs where they can earn a decent wage. Can you go to the, all those lunches, all of those banquets with the dais and the speeches and the cream chicken and all the wonderful Chamber of Commerce? Here we are, moving on. Well, what I have said 
back home, and I, and I say it again, is that our office is open. I've already talked to a number of business people. Uh, we will communicate. We're not shutting out anybody. But what I have also said is that what my concern is, is for the low-income people who are unemployed, who are working at minimum wage jobs, for the kids who are in Vermont as throughout the country. They're left out. They have no sense but of purpose. But everybody says that, Mayor. Well, they're going to be coming into our door. But do you want a tax, f for, especially for people who make more than $25,000 a year? Well, that, for, for individuals, perhaps not for families. That's too low. You know, we have husbands and wives. But, but you would consider a legislation that would tax the wealthy? Absolutely. We want to take the burden off low-income and working people, and you've got to go to those institutions, those corporations, and those individuals who can better afford to pay. You, uh, you surprised everybody with this victory, including media. And not all media has been consistently attentive to you. Isn't that right? Uh, I think what people were saying is, well, gee, Ronald Reagan is, is a right-wing guy, and what happened in Burlington, Vermont? And I think the answer to that is I don't believe personally that the majority of people in America believe in Ronald Reagan's ideology. What happened was that Jimmy Carter failed. I think that's just clear as everybody, Mr. Carter would probably admit it. Uh, and people are looking for an alternative. Mr. Reagan, with hundreds of millions of dollars behind him, with sophisticated media use and so forth and so on, was able to say to the people, we are the alternative. Now, obviously, what we are trying to do, people like myself all around the country are saying, wait a minute, you're going to find out very soon that this guy is not the alternative. There are other alternatives. Okay. Uh, I know these are terribly complicated questions, and our time is up, but are you a capitalist? No, I'm not a capitalist. So you don't believe in the profit motive, free enterprise, if I have a better mousetrap, I make more money. There's something can... to be said for free enterprise on a local level and the competition. But what we're happening in our society is we don't live in a free enterprise society. You live in a corporate capitalist society where in virtually every single industry you have giant multi-billion dollar corporations competing, driving the small businessman okay. But let's out. pretend it would work without all that kind of acquisition of power that is unfair and doesn't... Do I believe that the profit motive is fundamental to human nature? The answer is no. I think the spirit of cooperation that you and I can work together better rather than having to compete against each other and Detroit, destroy each other. Bernard Sanders, Mayor, Burlington, Vermont.